Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Uh, it's it's wonderful having Chaya today. So Chaya is a founder of Bate and a podcast host. And uh, yes, I'm wonderful. I'm very happy to have you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me here, Lakshat. I am quite excited to see how our conversation takes shape. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty glad. Thank you so much for introducing me as well. I would be happy to chat about podcasting, stories, poetry, conversations, anything that you might want to ask me today. Sure, sure. It would be my pleasure. So yes, uh, before before starting uh, with the question thing, I just would like to ask you if you can just give a brief introduction about yourself. No, no, of course. So uh, everybody who's watching, hi, my name is Chaya Dabas. I am a 25-year-old entrepreneur. I'm the founder of Bate, which is a platform that is dedicated to the world of stories, poetry, and conversations. And uh, we started this uh, journey around six to seven years ago when we were a mere community and trying to bring people together to express themselves creatively. About two years ago, we got registered as a company as well. And now we function also as a communication enhancement organization, but also we still continue to develop and build our uh, community that is very much uh, vibe growing and of course very vibrant as well. I did okay. my schooling in Delhi, which is where I was born and brought up in as well. I was just telling Lakshit off the record that this is where my family is, this is where my work is as well. Uh, even my undergraduation was from Delhi. I went to London, to King's College London for my higher studies. And since the, uh, since I've been back, I've been working in Delhi and now I do have my sights set on a global world as well. But yeah, this is where I've always been and yeah, very happy to be here. Yeah, thank you very much for your brief introduction. That's that's uh, wonderful. Um, before starting, like, could you could you uh, explain us briefly about your company? What is Bate? Definitely. So Bate is what we call uh, in Hindi conversations. Sorry, yeah. in English conversations. It's the little translation, but what it means is much more beyond just a translation. Bate is something that is my identity as well as an individual, as a writer, as a public speaker, as somebody who's always loved to talk, who's always had a lot of ideas and wanted to express them, who's always liked to network and interact with people. So it was sort of like a compilation of all these ideas together. Uh, it, of course, as I said, it started off as a community when I was in college. This was in 2014. I was in second year at that time, and I wanted to create a platform where I could present my own writings, but also the writings and expressions of different people that I interact with. So that's how an online community started. And very honestly, we never had a very long term plan at that time. We were quite naive and very young as well. But we knew that this is a place where un uh, completely raw expressions can completely come and showcase themselves. So that's how yeah. it started. Uh, we kept growing the community for about six years and more and more people started to join in. I was in Delhi University, so it became a very nice place for expressions to come together in Bate. So it became a known name. Uh, we gradually grew from there to also creating offline experiences for people interested in storytelling and poetry. And uh, about two years ago, we got registered as a company. So now we work in four uh, through four distinct pillars. We produce podcasts for both clients and for a community as well. We uh, work in the field of creative content writing, again, for both client and community. We have, as I said, we have a magazine, a Bharat. We have our own blog. We have a growing community where where stories and expressions keep joining in and coming together. Uh, thirdly, we conduct workshops, which are more skill development and training workshops, which we primarily do for clients. And the last is we do storytelling and poetry engagements. This again goes for both. It's purely for expression enhancement, but also trying to show a very diverse client base how stories and poetry can actually reach out to more people. So that's yeah. what Bart is. And um, we're a relatively known name now, which is something which we really worked hard to achieve. And yeah, it's a very creative platform and it's growing every single day and we're growing along with it. So yeah. Okay. And and why how did this idea come into your mind to start Bati? Like how did this name arrive and how did you why did you want to start this? Ah, this is a, a question I'm asked a lot. So basically when we were coming up with a blog name in the second year of my college, we did uh, sort of play around with a lot of Greek names, a lot of Roman names, just trying to, you know, create a niche in terms of what we were doing, but also have that flair uh, community that the moment you hear of the moment you hear of it, you're completely uh, interested, you're completely pulled towards it. And we were just sort of, I remember the day when me and the two other people who founded the community uh, with me, we were all sort of going through the names and suddenly it just struck 
why don't we just call it baatein because baatein as a word is so relatable it's so encompassing everything irrespective you're talking about something you're talking about a breakup you're talking about climate change you're talking about uh, something to deal with the matters of heart you're talking about friendship love history anything does becomes a conversation and also a conversation is always an exchange uh it would be even if it's with myself or with my diary or with my dog or with say you in front of me right now it's still an exchange it's an exchange of ideas stories emotions uh eye exchanges body language so we just wanted to combine these two ideas and we just felt that the word bate will be very relatable and it will reach out to a lot more people and our tagline actually says bate bas yun hi so it's sort of the, the tagline was given to us by it was a gift from my dad and that's what we are we are bate bas yun hi that no matter where you are where you belong which part of the country you're coming from what profession you are in what age you are like conversations can and always come to you and rescue you and heal you and make you slightly more happier so that's what we plan to achieve through our work as well okay and what kind of what kind of uh, activities and art forms uh, do you uh, do you you know um, have in adbate what kind of things do you do primarily storytelling and poetry so uh, not only community generated but also by the company and the organization as well so we do it's uh, a lot of written form of content so both stories book prose poetry as well there's a lot of audio as well because of course we work a lot in the field of podcasts so we do a lot of audio stories by our community we do a lot of open mics storytelling and poetry workshops um now we're also going into so basically now we're sort of exploring conversations irrespective of the form or the mode they come into or the mold they come into so we're okay. dabbling with all forms of modes now podcast videos audio i mean as creative as we can be a combination of all these things and plus we've never really had a very strict uh sort of category that this is only what baat hai bilo we've been very flexible because as we said conversations can be of varying topics and also of various genres and feelings as well so we're very flexible that way but i would say our uh, forte and our niche lies in storytelling and poetry okay okay and uh, how what, what what in both of uh, storytelling and poetry what what are you more interested in personally uh, i like writing in free verse so uh, i think when we were growing up poetry was taught to us in a rhyming scheme which when we grow when i grew up i realized that's actually not poetry that just sort of a mold that the poetry is falling into that okay. it has to rhyme towards the end of the sentence all the time and that's usually how somebody who's starting out to write poetry also sort of falls into but when i grew up i just realized that I don't want to think and write I just want my words to flow out especially when I'm trying to make sense of my emotions or what I'm going through inside so now I love writing in free verse uh professionally I also have to do a lot of research writing and a lot of <coughs> sorry a lot of uh, long form writing as well but if I have given a choice I'll just open my diary and I'll just strictly write in free verse because that's what calms me the most okay and would you would you, would you like to um, you know tell one of your closest poem to your heart you would like me to recite something yeah sure if you wish to no no of course i would love to you will have to give me a second though because i'll have to find something yeah you can crop this part out from the video yeah i'll do that first thing so um this was basically i was having a conversation with one of my friends who's also a very close uh, friend of i mean she's sort of like a sister and i was just telling her what we've been going through emotionally these days because the time which we find us alone is so uncertain and also so painful as well so uh, i just thought about optimism in general and um, i really like how it came on so maybe i can just read that out do you want me to wear my headphones or you're able to hear me loudly i mean uh, yeah you're audible you're audible now okay so um this really doesn't have a title so i'll just go 
and it's a free verse it's not a poem sorry yeah okay yeah. while pouring grief mixed with supple laughter you know how it is when sisters share it is a bit of everything we ended up talking about our faltering optimism and how all the constants around us were shrinking the last few weeks rather months have really tested the bandwidth of our optimism it seems like we all are just counting days before the band snaps i can yeah. feel it in our common pulsating heartbeat that holding it all together is only going to get tougher this isn't a deluge this isn't a deluge i am not trying to break your heart and paint over the silver lining a rarity too i just remember a line my sister said that maybe maybe our optimism is just our foolish denial and the line stuck a chord or found a caveat haven't i and maybe many more woken up to see a gray sky and said oh maybe it's going to rain some lines cling to you like a warm woolen sweater on a cold day but this isn't about words it's rather the lack of them while seeking clarity on a foggy day or optimism does seem to be in a foolish denial doesn't it my optimism ebbs and flows if you ask me whether we will eventually find it again i would say i really find the eventuality of things so incomprehensible and like loose sand the reality is a little hard to grasp and and like loose sand the reality is a little hard to grasp right now but so are most predictions omniscience and prayers some would say that gray clouds do part and sunlight seeps through often illuminating the silver lining and on most days i would believe you when my optimism is in a flow you see my foolish denial is quite naive and impressionable it will believe words as if written in stone but that is about optimism it doesn't cling too tight and and for too long as it needs despair to repair and gray clouds to illuminate silver linings it needs to be jiggled and sometimes poked by rummaging a little deeper i will let you know when it comes to brighten my day again that's it. wonderful it is beautiful thank you for reading that thank you uh, yes yes it's my pleasure it's my pleasure uh before before um you know you you said we also you have also have uh, storytelling at bate so would you like to share a story which which has touched your heart maybe in any form like uh, it can be a sad story a good story or a, any kind of story you you feel was uh, one of the most wonderful stories which touched you so uh i mean there is one short story that i had recently written but i think to read it out it might be a little really long uh it because we eventually actually made a podcast of it as well and i would be happy to share it with you but uh the story was basically about cancer so um very few people know this but i also happen to be a cancer survivor i okay. was uh in class 8th when i uh i was 13 years old if i'm not wrong when i was diagnosed with a bone tumor for my, on my left leg uh so it was a year long very painful and a very educational experience for me because one i was a very i was a very small child but just to see my parents and my sister and my family go through the pain while i was also going through a physical pain but for them to go through an emotional pain was quite turbulent and also very painful uh but that one year of course now everything is fine and perfectly cured but that one year taught me a lot it taught me how to appreciate the minutia of life it taught me how to love the ones who are closer to you slightly more closer and for longer uh yeah. it taught me a lot of things that i mean cancer was a very powerful teacher i will not wish it upon anybody ever in my life not even to my enemy but it did it was one of the most powerful teachers i ever had and uh, silver lining as a concept was actually something which i, I experienced while i was um, experiencing cancer i remember reading the story i think a couple of years ago before my treatment about what silver lining means and it was a story about how a girl was forced to go to live with her grandparents and every day she used to sulk because she was expecting a different summer all together but um and i think it was i mean as far as i remember it was supposed to be a coastal town or sorts so there used to be a lot of gray clouds that used to come up in the sky because rain was quite uh, common there and she used to keep crying that there are only gray clouds here it's not pretty it's not beautiful where am i stuck and then one day literally the sun peeped out and she could see the silver lining and suddenly the gray clouds became very beautiful and there was hope and joy and it was sort of like 
magical and she just realized that you know if you just tilt your head a little bit the perspective changes altogether so yeah. she was so that was a story that had taught us the concept of silver lining but i actually learned about it as an experience while i was suffering from cancer uh, there was a point of time when i unfortunately went through a very uh, low point in terms of the treatment i was admitted in the icu because of uh, a lot of uh, hemoglobin my hemoglobin had completely dropped so uh, i got a lot of blood overnight blood transfusion uh, and in the morning i was feeling really pumped up and very fresh because of course i had a lot of fresh blood in me suddenly so i was feeling very energetic which was a very which was a rarity because i was usually feeling very weak and sick during the uh, treatment and i was quite excited because i was feeling quite energized and i was about to go home so for the first time in the treatment i would have gone home and not felt that okay i need to lie down or i'm not feeling good so i was just about to start packing and when my doctor came and she said you know we're going to keep you one more day for an observation in the hospital and it literally broke me because i was supposed to come back for my next chemo cycle anyway in a couple of days and it was rarity that i was feeling the way i was feeling because i never got in that kind of energy before so i remember she took me to the nearby pediatric ward where newborn babies with various health ailments somebody had a hole in their heart somebody had to get another operation done and parents sitting around them and it was just a very it was a very sad sight because these children had just come to the world and hadn't even gotten a chance to look around and they were still waiting and most of them praying for their survival as well so i remember the doctor turned to me and she said that um, you know it could happen to anybody one and second it's not about why you were chosen or it's not about why it happened with you it's about how soon could you cure it or how soon could you catch it uh my cancer was caught at a very early stage so of course despite the ordeal i did come out of it triumphant and completely cured uh i had lost all my hair all my hair is back as you can see so there was a time when it was a dip in my life but eventually mm-hmm. i came out of it so she i remember my doctor said that you know it could happen to anybody but if you don't try to catch the silver lining in gray situations or dark situations you will never be able to move forward or heal yourself or also try to understand that sometimes things just happen and you do stop looking for a reason for that just understand okay what's beyond this the moment you're able to see beyond this you're able to see beyond the gray clouds you will be able to see the silver lining yeah yeah so these stories and these experiences became very relevant because they formed the edifice of what i'm doing right now uh, everybody i've met in my life every sometimes was really stick with you there is this um, show called uh, it's a stand up act called nanette by hanna gadsby it's on uh, netflix so i was watching it while i was in london it was a day when it was raining and it was really gloomy and i was watching her stand up she's a she's a lesbian uh, stand up comedian from australia one of the first ones if anybody who's not familiar highly recommend the show uh, so she said this one line that stories hold our cure and that one line came it, it just stuck with me and it also sort of tied everything that i wanted to say and do in professionally or personally in my life together so sometimes words and experiences do come to you and rescue you and memories of course eventually become experience as and all these interactions do become memories uh for you but i think this is why stories have always played a very important role in my life because they happen to me at starting at a very early age and they continue to do so and just make this life so much more i would say fulfilling and so much more colorful so yeah okay. sorry for the long okay. monologue <laughs> yeah yeah Okay, wonderful. Thank, thank you for showing, sharing your story. Ah, uh, so, so coming, coming to the the, the company back, uh, Bati. So, how does the business model works? How does the you know uh, business works in uh, Bati? Would you, if you like, if you like to speak about that? So basically, as I said, that we work through four different offerings, and that's something which we've been developing and building for the last four years now. Ah, uh, Bati is a bootstrapped organization, so we work with clients and. we whatever revenue we generate that's put back into the company we are currently not funded we didn't really think of going that route but hopefully in the future once we start i mean when we scale up more we might also take that route but so yeah so we have very interesting uh, set of clients that we can currently work with and have continued to work with but also we keep exploring new options as well and new collaborations as well of course uh, bate.in is the website where you will be able to see all the work that we've done till now with very interesting clients and with diversity of we we story boarded a documentary film which was shot in uh, ladakh right just 10 kilometers before pakistan starts 
uh, we produce children's newspaper for one of our clients we co produce podcasts uh, for hindustan times we deliver uh, storytelling and community uh, communication enhancement workshops for itc hotel so the kind of work we do is very interesting and very diverse and that's something which i believe also helps us stand out because what we offer will not be that much i mean in terms of workshops and podcast will not be new but the way we go about it is what i would say connects us with a lot more people and of course our community is also something that we leverage and combine both of them i guess create a very beautiful niche for us so that's how we work on the company side okay and uh, do you do you also have uh, you know different people coming and speaking about their stories you know different people uh, singing their written poems and if yes how how you as a company help them grow definitely so this is exactly what a community is uh, we are very active on i mean instagram is one of the main platform that a community has sort of found a home we also have a very robust uh, newsletter that is uh, growing regularly and which is very interactive as well so it keeps people informed about what we do um how we go about things if there's a new open mic that is coming in if there is a new workshop that is coming in if there is a new sikh community oriented campaign that's coming up so we uh, that's something which anybody who's interested to learn about what we do can subscribe to it uh follow us on instagram we are at the rate baate b w a t e i n uh we just launched our magazine it's called ibarat by baate it's the third edition that we currently working on it's a confluence of expressions and it features people from various walks of life and different art forms and different modes as well so you can submit a podcast a video a story a dance piece it could be anything that falls into the category of expressions per se and um, we also of course are on linkedin but that's the business side of things so anybody wants to connect with us on that side of things that's how you go about it but i would say just staying in touch with us because we're very active and we make sure that everybody hears if we're coming up with something new so follow us on instagram and subscribe to our newsletter bathi.in is the website yeah. okay 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 and um, what what would uh, like you know uh, we when we speak about a company we just speak about the good side but i just want to ask what has been uh, a tough situations and hard hard um, you know hard part of growing your company no no of course so just like any other journey that's there are always a lot of potholes and a lot of um, i would say hurdles that anybody needs to cross irrespective of its personal professional as part of another company doing something of your own uh entrepreneurship might be slightly tougher because you're sort of completely branching out on your own and you're you're literally your own pr your, your own hr your own ceo your own boss or your own employee your, your own peon so you're everything into one it's exciting definitely there's you're your own boss also so that's a very good feeling uh but yeah just like anything else you're starting out an idea so sometimes the the monument will topple down sometimes things might not work the way you expected them to sometimes it will take months and months for an answer to come or say a client to revert uh sometimes there might be something and also i think sitting at the helm of an organization you take everything very personally as well even if you don't want to uh plus also you you have to pay salaries you have to pay the rent you have to uh take care of the business side of things so it's it requires a lot of micro managing and sometimes one of the bands and one of the connections can snap but i think it also allows you to learn a lot i have grown massively i can confirm that in the last two years i've seen myself evolve as a person uh there's a lot of learning we are a little bit more hasty and nervous when it's entrepreneurial because you feel that everybody everything is going to fall back on you and uh things would also come tumbling down on you as well so you just have to be more careful it's a new day every single day so it's both exciting but also a lot of learning involved you have to be careful about how you go forward and yeah i mean um scaling up a new business is always a tough task and uh, a lot of people are able to emerge out of it successfully and most some of them also fold their chapters as well so i yeah, think yeah. um it requires you to be patient it requires you to stay at it it requires you to also persevere um with a lot of dedication and commitment and also know that it's a long term game you're not playing it for say a couple of months or say a year or two it's yeah. maybe sometimes also about a lifetime and yeah i think i mean we learn every single day we have made a lot of mistakes like anybody else but uh we continuously evaluate how we're doing mm-hmm. in terms of with ourselves so we're not really competing with anybody else but we're trying to grow compared to what we were yesterday and i think that 
keeps us alive and that keeps us going yeah. okay wonderful and uh, how how has been uh, you know how has been you are affected personally and professionally uh, by the by the pandemic going all around the world so uh, i mean see with the pandemic i am very grateful and blessed and i would say privileged as well that uh, i am in a secure safe and slightly spacious environment at the moment of course my parents did uh, work really hard and my grandparents did as well to provide us with a certain amount of safety security and lifestyle as well but having said that this pandemic has affected i would say everybody in different measures um it has been health wise affected anybody close to me right now and i hope that that's how it stays but a lot of people have been even um, i mean medically effect, uh, gotten affected by it and i my prayers go out to them i think um, one thing that it has definitely done is business wise things have become a little slow but that was expected because this is how the time got but having said that personally while there have been days when my mental health hasn't been in a good condition and i've been really worried and i've been really because i have grandparents and my nani doesn't stay she stays a little far away from us so there is a lot of worry my look my best friend is in the us a lot of my other friends are in different countries so that anxiousness is there but also yes. a lot of gratitude and a lot of uh, care and comfort for myself and my own feelings and my own hygiene and health as well i think uh, we're becoming more responsible we're becoming more careful but we're also understanding that some things are not in our control at all and all you can do is just just do your own bit and try to um uh, contribute as much as you can especially to somebody who might be dealing with it much more and in different situations financially economically emotionally mentally so just and also something i always i always love talking as i said at the beginning of this call but with time i've learned to also become a better listener so that's something i'm developing continuously and in these times i hope i also become a better listener because somebody else might want to talk about what they're feeling and as yeah. a friend sister just somebody who started a platform called bate i need to be there to listen to people so that's something yeah. which i have learned in this time as well Yeah. Okay. 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 And what would be your advice uh, from personal level to anybody who wants to start their own company? I think uh, if, when I wanted to start my own company, I attended a talk uh, where Quinn's founder uh, Ritu was chatting, and she was saying that see, you start your own thing, definitely go for it. We as youngsters have tremendous ideas and potential, but one thing is know that there's nobody bankrolling it, so you need to know. the you need to be steady with the financial aspect of things just know that okay you have enough to start on your own it might be savings funding a uh, partnership or a loan or whatever you're going about and second she said was have a plan even if it's a five year plan two month plan a week long plan the first step is ready just have a plan because eventually it will take its own shape but that these are the two things that you need to start so anybody who wants to start something of their own one know how you're going to back it up how what's the resources that you're going to employ and second of course have a structured plan for it and thirdly i would add that have a team that you can trust have it might be a co-founder it might be a partner have somebody it might be your partner in life it might be your boyfriend girlfriend parents anybody just somebody who can jam ideas with somebody who can bounce off ideas uh and also just learn from them as well in their experience and lastly i would say have a mentor because a mentor would come with a lot of experience they would come with a lot of knowledge they would come with an unbiased opinion and also will be harsh with you when needed kind to you when needed so i think these four things are very necessary a mentor does not have to be somebody who is the ceo of pepsi or coca cola it could just be somebody who you look up to a teacher a friend somebody who is a little superior in uh, in the industry from you so yeah i think these four and put together could make a make a really good entrepreneurial journey for you Okay, wonderful. And uh, yeah, before, before ending, uh, just would you like to leave a note, or would you like to add some things more in the the episode? You can just do it right now. I would like to thank you because I genuinely thank enjoyed you. myself, and uh, I really enjoy these conversations. I love um, talking to new people, so I had a blast. And yeah, just keep. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Just keep talking to everybody. Just. indulge in conversation and let stories happen to you aur baatein bas yahi chalti rehni chahiye yeah true yeah thank you very much for being here it was pleasure having you 
and a wonderful session a lot of things to learn a lot of things to know and uh, it's it's my pleasure you you joined in after after a long time you we, we want to do this but anyway we did it today and yeah well, thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you